And as I call for the funeral directors to come forward to close, if there's anyone who has not had the opportunity to view Deborah's earthly home, we know she now has a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. But if you have not had a chance to view and would like to, please do so at this time.
I am blessed to step in right now for our senior pastor, Reverend P. Devon Brown. I am Reverend Michelle Taylor Sanders, and I was here at St. Mark from 2001 to 4 as the associate pastor and was blessed to get to know Lee and Deborah McCord and the whole family during those years, and what a blessing it is to have known them and I am privileged to be here to share in your sorrow today and to let you know that you are in my prayers and our prayers. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Deborah McCord. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death resurrection. Amen. And we are blessed today to have a family member, Reverend Alvoy Lewis Bryan here to lead us in our opening prayer. First of all, let me thank the pastor for inviting me up. And also my sister in Christ, and the other person on the roster. Let me take a few moments, if I may, to share why I feel humble and honored to do this prayer. It's just not a prayer. Yesterday on my way flying here, we were at 30,000 feet. And the plane has a slight turbulence. And I have bilateral hearing, hearing aids, and the main hearing aid went out. So I took both of them out. So I had the tunnel vision. And apparently, the pilot got on the, to the speaker. The, intercom system and said, we're climbing to 36,000 feet. And in climbing to that 36,000 feet, the plane was smooth, the ride was peaceful, the sky was blue and not gray, and I was sitting right on the engine and the wing of that plane. And God spoke to me and said, Deborah, have her wings. That's right. That's right. I had to get here to see her face, to see that she made a peaceful transition. So now, this is the reason why I'm praying. And let us all grab hands now as a family, because this family needs the support. We are all one now. And let us pray, Father, for you say they're the time, and they're the season, and they're the purpose. They're the time to be born. They're the time to live. They're the time to leap. But they're the time to die. And so even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you say that both goodness and mercy shall follow us 
But you also say that there's an appointed time for man to die. And then come the judgment. But Jesus, you said in your father house where you went to prepare a way, there are many mansions. If it was not so, you would have told us. So even though they have a wing like a dove, can fly away and be at rest. That the fact that death, where is that sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? For thank God for the victory in Christ Jesus. Because earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And Lord, we thank you now. We pray and ask that you put your arms around this family and keep them safely in the shelters of your arm. And we ask these blessings now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweetest name I know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Now I'll ask the Sue Epps and Ms. Dorothy Britton to come up to this lectern here to my left and share our scripture lesson. Good morning, church. A reading from the Old Testament, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I knew De Deborah Diane McCord since 1965 when we met on the 12th floor of Neely Hall at SIU. And we have been friends ever since. She has always been my De Deborah Diane. And she was just the sweetest thing. We had so many adventures there, and she will never be forgotten. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm going to get through this. I'm reading for you Revelations, the 21st chapter, 1 through 7. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God to with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death 
but sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the form things have passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said to me, Write for these words are true and faithful. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of the freely to him with thirst. Who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be God, and he shall be my son. God bless the reading for the edification of my soul. Mm -hmm. I met Deborah at Mayfair. Uh, I believe my kids was probably three. <laughs> and I just, she was the sweetest person, and we was just naive as we could be. Uh, Kelly and my daughter, we were, they were having a recital, the first recital for Deborah and I. So we just excited as we could be. <laughs> we was really excited. And so uh, the director said, well, we, gotta, we don't have any socks, so your parents have to get together to get some socks. And so Deborah and I said, oh, this cannot happen. We cannot have our kids like this. So we going from the north side, downtown, to the south side, and in the midst of going downtown, we lose the car. We get the ticket, and the ticket just don't have the address. And so she said, I said, well, Deborah, maybe we should call your husband. And so she calls Lee, and Lee said, well, I got to go and get my hair cut. And I said, oh, Deborah, what are we going to do? She said, well, we're going to keep looking. And lo and behold, we walked up to the place where the car was. Now, we done shopped all day looking for these socks. And we got socks for everybody in that, on that dance team. So we promised ourselves, this is it. We are not going to do this again. And I'm sure, I know I didn't do it for my daughter's prom or graduation, none of that foolishness, but we enjoyed. And Deborah was my friend from then until the end. And I love you guys. Thank you. If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon, if anybody asks you where I'm going. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. Going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, I'm going up yonder. Oh, I'm going up yonder. Going up beyond uh, to be with my Lord. 
Oh, I can take the pain The heartaches they breathe The comforts they're in knowing I'll soon be gone As God gives me grace I'll run this race Till I see my Savior Face to face Oh well I'm going up yonder I'm going up yonder Going up yonder To be with my Lord Oh To be with my Lord Oh, I'm going up beyond yes, yes. Going up beyond yes, Going up beyond To be with my Lord That when we leave this earth, oh, if we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we're going up yonder. We can tell people, I know where I'm going. <laughs> up yonder to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so now we come to that time of tributes and resolutions. And you know what we always say? <laughs> Two minutes, please. <laughs> Two minutes, please. So anyone who wishes to make a tribute, give a tribute, make a resolution, come through this door. You can be seated in the choir stand as uh, needed and come and make those resolutions and give tributes. Because I know there's a lot to say, but you can't say it all. Good morning, St. Mark. Oh, not long. I'm Camille Johnson, and I was asked to read a tribute to Deborah, written by her dear friend, Jamil Hall. Jamil is away and unable to be present today, but wanted her presence to still be felt. Before I share Jamil's words, please allow me as co-chair with Patricia Phillips of our St. Mark Lay Visitation Ministry to offer to you, Lee, our lay visitor extraordinaire, our sincere condolences. We pray that the kindness, attention, and sensitivity you have shown to so many comes back to you triplefold. A number of our shut-ins, your co-committee, and co-chair members and especially, dear Deborah, have benefited from your God spirit. And now from Jamil, she writes, my sister cousin, my colleague, my friend. Deborah and I met in college a few years ago. We would see one another on campus or at parties, but we never bonded. Yeah, I think I heard somebody laugh when I said a few years ago. But back in those days, upperclassmen didn't hang around with underclassmen. Fast forward to 1980, who would have thunk it? Deborah came to work at my school. This time we did bond. Through the years, we became the hardest working teachers at the school. We would stay so late after work, many times we were nearly locked in the school. 
We would spend countless hours on the phone after work in hopes of fixing the educational system. Fast forward to 1983, my son John and Deborah's daughter Kristen, my goddaughter, were born. A few years later, Kelly joined the mix. Ticketmaster was so happy to see us coming because we bought tickets to every event out there for toddlers. And let's not forget having breakfast with Santa every year. Deborah could be funny and witty at times. One evening, she and Lee were going to go out after a busy day. She said, girl, we got the girls ready, got some KFC, took them to Mama Dots and pushed them out. Deborah and I were on the phone one day, and I said, I have to go. I have to fix spaghetti, and it takes a long time. She said, well, why? I said, because I have to cut up the green peppers and onions, saute them. She stopped me and said, you better go get some ragu. <laughs> it has all that in it. She was right. She was so proud of Kristen and Kelly and very happy to be a grandmother. Having known Deborah for five plus decades, there's so much more I could say. A few days before Deborah made her transition, I sat and talked to her. When it was time to go, I said, I have to leave now. Kelly said, say goodbye, Mom. Deborah replied for the last, one last time, goodbye, girlfriend. And so from us all, rest in peace, our friend. Okay. I also have the privilege of reading the resolution from St. Mark. Would St. Mark members who are present please stand for a moment? Lee, I'm sure you hear all of the sounds behind you, so know that your friends are here. Please be seated. Whereas the family of Mrs. Deborah McCord has suffered a great loss in her transition to the church, et church eternal, and whereas the hearts of the entire St. Mark United Methodist Church congregation are heavy with the burden of grief shared by the family, and whereas the mission of St. Mark was embraced in the witness of Mrs. McCord through her active participation in such vital activities as Sunday school teacher, communion steward, greeter, and a leader to the Shirley V. Hobson liturgical dance ministry. Whereas we are all united by our identity as members of Christ's Holy Church, which is sustained by the love and grace of God, and whereas we know that for everything there is a season, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, let it therefore be resolved that we express our sympathy to the family in the loss of this great servant of the Lord. And be it further resolved that we will strive to keep Mrs. McCord's legacy alive by emulating the commitment and dedication she demonstrated during her Christ, along her Christian journey. And be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution will be placed in the official files of St. Mark United Methodist Church, and a copy will be given to the family as a means of providing strength and comfort to you in the days and years that lie ahead. Respectfully submitted on this 29th day of March in the year 2023, Reverend P. Devon Brown, lead pastor. Thank you. Um, growing up for close to now 25 years, Kelly and um, Kelly and Christian have been like big sisters and a little sister. And uh, when I was running for office, uh, Kelly became the honorary uh, campaign manager, fussing, just all types of fussing. Even wanted me to go and get a, do a dog a home while running for office. Um, but that's the spirit of this family have always been available to serve and to help by any means necessary.
Uh, growing up, we were afraid of you, Mr. McCord. Uh, David's all the way at the top because he's still afraid. Because <laughs> you're the only man that we knew, black man, that could do a lie detector test. <laughs> So we knew that if we came by you, you would see the truth in us. So shame the devil. and You made us sell the truth. But I want to read a, a resolution that will soon be adopted by our city council. Uh, whereas in God's infinite wisdom and his mighty power, he gave to us a gift. Deborah Diane Poole, a remarkable woman, whereas she started her journey on April the 19th, 19. 48, she spent her time in this neighborhood, Park Manor, later graduated from Park, Mal Park Manor Elementary School in Hearst. She contributed her gift to so many that she came across, 1,500 students, whereas her gift changed lives, her family changed us all. Whereas always active in civic and community engagement, her spiritual gift, seen through her liturgical dance ministry, even carried on through her daughters at St. Mark, and those who knew her were blessed because of how she glowed and how she served. As a member of Delta Sigma Theta, a black club in her community, we know her because of this. Whereas the honorable elect, soon to be mayor, <laughs> in the city council hereby extend our benefit, our condolences to you and our love to you, this, res uh, this resolution will be given to the family in the August council meeting and will be shared to this family because she cares so much about her family and we do too. Whereas myself, the honorable elect, William Hall, sixth ward alderman, is here to let you know that your transition is only to a greater place that we shall soon see her again. Thank you. Good morning. I am Leisha Knight, a member of St. Mark United Methodist Church and representing the St. Mark Liturgical Dance Ministry. A resolution for Deborah McCord. Will the members of St. Mark and the Liturgical Dance Ministry please stand? Amen. You may be seated. We, the members of the St. Mark United Methodist Church and the Shirley V. Hobson Liturgical Dance Ministry, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid farewell to a sister and woman of faith, Mrs. Deborah McCord, the wife of Lee McCord, the mother of Dr. Kristen McCord Smith and Kelly McCord, a beloved grandmother, mother-in-law, and an active member of the St. Mark United Methodist Church family. Whereas Deborah McCord professed a hope in Christ in her early years of adulthood and was an active member of the regular, regular supporter of her church. She served as a Sunday school teacher, communion steward, greeter, and the liturgical dance ministry cherub's coordinator. Deborah was known as a dance mom and served in that capacity over 25 years. She used her primary teaching skills to ensure the children were well-mannered and the dance choreographers were patient and kind with each dancer. It was because of the love of dance that Deborah had, she enrolled her daughters in Mayfair Academy. And when Reverend Dr. Myron McCoy approached her to let Kristen and Kelly dance for the Lord, her daughters became the first choreographers of the Shirley B. Hobson Liturgical Dance Ministry. Whereas Deborah McCoy was a virtuous woman who loved the Lord, a very loyal and faithful person, who served her family to follow her example. She loved her family with a gentle and loving aura, which only she possessed. Whereas not only is this loss of a devoted wife and grandmother, but also a confidant to her closest friends, a person who was always available to share an encouraging word and support those in need. Whereas the passing of our beloved sister in Christ is the will of God, and there's a human tie that has been broken. We are encouraged and consoled the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave nor forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. 
And we know that we cannot replace Deborah, but will attempt to demonstrate her love for you. To the family of Deborah McCord, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. We want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize this, is, this loss is heaven's gain. When it's all over, we would like you to remember, in case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like us to hear, in case there's a favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help see you through. Humbly submitted on the 29th of April, 2023. In love, the members of St. Mark United Methodist Church and the members of the St. Mark UMC Shirley B. Hobson Dance Ministry. Reverend P. Devon Brown is pastor. I have a special tribute from Cousin Delcy to read. Can Cousin Delcy stand? All right, she, won't, she doesn't want to stand, so I represent her. My cousin Deborah was big, small in stature, but big. All right, all right, cousin. <laughs> The only person I knew who wanted to hang in the projects, my cousin was big. My cousin Deborah introduced me to things that were way above my income. My cousin could help produce a dance ministry that she didn't receive a payment for and volunteered her time and heart, amen. My cousin loved teaching and if ever there was a teacher that taught, it was her. My cousin Deborah loved music, and if Luther was singing, it made her day. My cousin loved Billy D. Williams and Lady Sings the Blues. She loved Sparkle, and she took me to plays. My cousin loves Big, and Big stands for beautiful, intelligent, and grand. Love always, Delcy. Thank you, Delcy, for that tribute. Greetings, everyone. My name is Atoya, and I'm representing Deborah's Parkside family. Deborah was at Parkside for over 25 years, and she was extremely dedicated. She was an unparalleled teacher, mentor, friend, even mother. I know the students would often call her mother or even grandmother. Deborah was so dedicated. She basically spent 110% of her time at Parkside. And for her family, thank you for sharing her with us because she was there many, many hours. If there was a before school program, she was there tutoring. She was there after school tutoring. Even Saturday school, she worked that as well. And you would think that she was there for the money. That's not the case at all. They would actually often have to call her to pick up her check. The clerk would say, um, Ms. Deborah McCord, you have a package in the main office? Because she would never come and pick up her check. She just loved teaching. She loved to make sure that every single student was learning and that they got something out of education. And the students absolutely loved her. They knew they would work hard, but they absolutely loved her for her hard work and dedication. Deborah was there at the school so often and she was the latest one there. One time, she even got locked in a building. They chained up all the doors. She had to set off the alarm in order for them to come and open the door for her. That's how dedicated she was. She loved it, absolutely loved teaching. But she did everything she possibly could. She took on student teachers. She did academic Olympics. She did it all. She was a phenomenal person. And for me, she was a friend as well. I've known her since 2001. She's been through both of my children's births. She even gave my son, who's 20 now, his first books, which he actually used when he was two to read to his baby sister who was just born. Because she helped him to see that learning and reading was really fundamental. And so that legacy started with her and is gonna continue. So for us, we love Ms. Deborah McCord and we will truly miss her. 
and we know that she is one of the most phenomenal people in the world. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. I'm Lynn Avery. I'm Deborah Sora, an alumni. Would the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated please stand and the alumni of Southern Illinois University. Please stand. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. There are several things that no one should ever be sorry for, for doing good to all, for speaking evil to no one, for listening before judging, for thinking before speaking, for holding one's angry tongue, for being kind to those in distress, for asking forgiveness for wrongs done, for being patient toward everyone, for not listening to gossip, and for not believing evil news. These were the qualities of our Deborah Poole McCord, who touched our lives from the moment she landed at Southern Illinois University. Like most of us, she settled into campus life, but soon noticed, no realized, no felt that something was different. Something was different between our experience as black students and the experience of the other students on campus. There was nothing there. No classes, no activities, nothing there that reflected our experience. We were on the fringes, but that soon changed. Deborah found Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and was initiated in the Epsilon Xi chapter. Here was a place for her to focus her energy, a place to be of value. Her interest directed her to collaborate with the Black Panthers Breakfast Program, which served the community in Carbondale. She, like all of us, got caught up in working towards electing the first black student body president, Dwight Campbell. She also worked in electing the first black homecoming queen, Hazel Scott. Her interest turned towards broader concerns and with the joint efforts of others, the first black studies program was initiated. Deborah loved her sorority that she and 13 of her sisters became the charter members of Zeta Chi chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, located at Southern Illinois University's Carbondale campus. Yes, Deborah was busy, but never too busy to study and earn her degree in primary education. These accomplishments are small in comparison to what she shared with us, the essence of her being. Her simple smile that made someone's day. Her full laugh lit up the room. Her softly spoken word of encouragement to someone who at that very moment was feeling unworthy. Yes, this was our Deborah, who responded the call to serve, the call to action, who on April 20th, 2023, responded to the final call of our Heavenly Father to return home. We, her sisters in Delta, her friends and alumni of Southern Illinois University, and her family give witness to her life. Be it resolved that her life serve as a lasting memorial to her memory and that we will strive to emulate her beautiful life. Be it resolved that we will not forget her soft, caring presence, nor the joy she brought into our lives. We resolve to keep the family of Deborah Poole McCord in our thoughts and prayers. We know that there is a time for sorrow, a time for sadness, 
but that God will soothe our troubled hearts and we will find peace. When that work is all completed, he will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting. Oh, the joy of seeing you come home. Respectfully submitted on behalf of Delta Soros and Epsilon Xi and Zeta Chi, her friends from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, Illinois. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. My name is David Perkins, and I have the dubious distinction of being the oldest member of Deborah's family. It has been my joy and my privilege to love and be loved by her, my mother, Deborah Poole, her grandmother, Jillette Wright Jemison, and her great-grandmother, Betty Lorraine Perkins. When I was standing in the back of the church, a gentleman asked me, Aren't you going up to see the body? And I said, no. Because for me, that's not, for me, Deborah is here, here, and there. And that's all. My last good conversation, whatever I will leave you with. We were just talking, and she hit me with this piece of wisdom. The very next time you think about calling a friend, a loved one, a confidant, and then you say, I don't have the time, I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. That's right. Until that day you get that call that they are no more. And I don't care what your faith is or how much you care. That person that's in the coffin cannot appreciate how much you care. They can't hear you. They've already gone home. And all you doing is water the grass around the gravesite with your tears. So the next time you feel that way, make that call. Make it. Even if it does interrupt her husband's <laughs> favorite football game. No matter how we feel, no one in this earth is a true stranger to the person next to them, especially the black folk. Be like Deborah. We used to double date. Friend, Cousin, confident, person of reason, person of consequence, mother, daughter, grandmother, beloved. Deborah. I'm just going to say here, I don't have a stopwatch, but 
I think we are going a little over those two minutes. And so with respect for the family and respect for the fact that we have to get to the cemetery, and I hear, I don't know how many people are back there, but please keep that in mind as you come forward to share. Thank you very much. Um, this is a resolution for Deborah D. McCoy. It starts, no matter what your, what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. Here, all, here go to all the extremes so that, so that if you cross, if your cross seems hard to bear, and you know not what you, you do. The one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. I'm sorry, I, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I'm from the 8200 Champlain block. This is something I'm not used to really doing. Um, I'm gonna make sure I get this to you, Lee McCoy, and one copy to the family. Um, I just want to tell you, it's really a, a loss to us all, but we are there for you if you ever need us. Amen. Amen. Hello. I think it's appropriate I just come up after I represent the block. So I'm speaking today on behalf of my family, the Harmons my parents, Deborah and Percival, my sister, Jennifer, and myself, Jessica. We lived on 8200 South Champlain, across the streets from the Cords, for nearly 40 years. In that time, a deep bond and friendship was forged between our families. For us Harmons, the McCord family, and the matriarch of Mrs. Deborah McCord in particular, has had a lasting and positive impact on our lives. Mrs. McCord, and I'll refer to her that way because that's how I knew her, Mrs. McCord was a confidant for my mother's. They both worked for Chicago Public Schools and raised their daughters in the city, with us oftentimes attending the same schools and even some extracurricular activities. It was my mom's hope that upon retirement, she and Mrs. McCord would be able to be running buddies, so going to movies, taking classes, seeing plays, all of that. And they did do that for several years prior to her illness. And as Mrs. McCord dealt with her illness, my mom made sure to remain by her friend. For my father, he and Mr. McCord became good friends. That friendship allowed him to see and celebrate the milestones that Mr. and Mrs. McCord reached as a couple, as well as those of their family. Finally, for my sister and I, Mrs. McCord was an important adult in our lives. She was someone we could turn to and rely on to help protect and celebrate us. We were immensely fortunate to have had her in our lives just across the street. But Jennifer and I didn't just realize this due to her passing. Rather, in the last few years, as we've become mothers ourselves, we realized that Mrs. McCord and the family overall was the village who helped raise us. My sister and I can only hope that we will be so blessed as to have our families meet our own Mrs. McCord for the benefit and enrichment of our children. In closing, while I struggle with what Mrs. McCord had to go through in her final years and other people who deal with such illnesses, I want to take this time to extend my thanks and gratitude to all who provided her with care and support. I sincerely thank you for your efforts and dedication. I don't struggle, however, with proclaiming on behalf of my family, the Harmons, our appreciation for the life of Mrs. Deborah McCord. We love her and are beyond privileged to have had her in our lives for so many years. Thank you. Good morning. I stand up here to say bye, Deborah. I'm the little cousin when she came home from college. She always made sure she took me out somewhere. My father had two kids, his niece and me. And Deborah always made sure that we went somewhere. And she made the best onion dip ever. I'm going to miss you, Deborah. I'm going to miss seeing you at McDonald's in the morning when I'm standing there waiting on the bus. I love you. 
And rest in peace, my dear, rest in peace. Good morning, church. Uh, my name is Harold Gilmore. I'm the presiding president of the St. Mark's Golf Club. Can I please ask that all members, former and present who are here, please stand. You can sit down, Lee. <laughs> 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 Uh, I have a, a, a quick resolution. Be it so resolved that we, the St. Mark's Golf Club, do hereby extend our sincere condolences to the family of our cherished member, Lee McCord. We also wish to acknowledge their daughters, Jennifer, Kristen, and Kelly. We cannot know the loss and the pain you feel. However, we do know that God can heal. The sacrifices our loved ones make so that we can play this game do not go unnoticed. Our families become members by proxy, for our time is also theirs. Thusly, we acknowledge and appreciate Mrs. Deborah McCord. Lee, may God comfort you and your family as your loved one awaits in the arms of our Lord. Humbly submitted this day, April 29th, 2023. A copy of this resolution will rest with the family and also this church. Amen. Good morning. I bear greetings and condolences from the Truth and Soul Barbershop. <laughs> you know, you spend a lot of time with the, at the barbershop, and they're like family. I think uh, Lee gets your hair cut bi-weekly, so we'll see you more than your cousins. You know. but, um, but I just wanted to uh, give our condolences to you. You know, I know Haji, who's unable to make it. And, um, and, and one quick note, you know, the Truth and Soul Barbershop is from the movie Barbershop. And um, I don't know, Haji, uh, who cut your hair would be Ice Cube in, in the movie. I said, really, it's the truth. So, but anyway, uh, we love you. We love this noble family. And, and we pay tribute to this great church and their efforts, and I appreciate it. And my grandson is using the golf clubs from that, from you guys donating them. So thank you, God bless you, and you know we'll see you at the heaven. Amen. 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 Hello, my name is Thomas Keller. Uh, got two minutes, huh? but two minutes won't be enough to let you kind people know how The smart, kind, and gentle woman was. You know, I've been knowing her almost 70 years. Her family, her mother, her grandmother, they took me under a wing. And when we were coming up, we were really good friends through grammar school and high school. Um, when Deborah graduated and went on to college, I went into the Marine Corps and we lost touch. But, uh, she did four years in college, and I did four years in the Marine Corps. So when I got out, uh, fortunately, I was still in touch with her grandmother and her mother. By me having that, I kept in touch with her. And uh, her daughters were her life. <laughs> I mean, when they were young, she was schooling them. <laughs> she would take them to school. And as they ride, and she would have them read the street signs, you know. And she was, uh, she was more than a teacher. She was, like you say, an educator, you know. And she's going to be really missed. I'm going to miss her. 
But I'm gonna tell you one thing and I'm gonna leave, show you how much of an educator she was. She was telling me one day they had uh, in a school, um, they had a deficiency in the students in their reading and math in the beginning of the semester. At the end of the semester, Deborah's class was the only class in the school that advanced and improved in their, their reading and math so much that they gave her, they gave her assembly and presented her with an award. Only class in the school that improved. So you can tell what type of teacher she was. A lot of the teachers came and, you know, recognized and, you know, gave her the, you know, the uh, reconciliation she needed. But she was kind of upset because a few of them didn't. And uh, I told her, I said, Debra, darling, I said, if people couldn't help, the teachers couldn't help but like you because you're a lovable person. The reason why the other teachers most likely didn't come to you is when that green-eyed monster came out. You know, jealousy. They were jealous because you did something they couldn't do. And she said, I realize that, and that's not gonna keep me but continue to educate our youth. She was really something else. And when I was a young boy, we, we was together 14 years old, she taught me a thing or two at that young age. The, the girls of her life. I knew everything you girls did from Mayfair all the way through school, grammar school, college, and Christian even through medical school. And you got the best parents in the world for parents to, to send two girls through college, have two weddings, you know, send you through medical school. They loved you girls very much, you know. And you see by the love she had for them for what they are now. One's a teacher and the other's a physician. So <laughs> that tells you about, a lot about Deborah. Uh, I'm gonna miss her. Thank you. Amen. So we just had one more person <laughs> come back. But we, please, no one else. Um, whatever else is on your mind or heart, please share it with the family later. But we have two more people coming down. Uh, Hi, I won't be long. Um, I moved to Chatham in 1999, and little did I know at that time that I would inherit some of the best neighbors in the entire world. Deborah and Lee McCord and their beautiful daughters. I just want the family to know that I will cherish Deborah's memory. I remember when Deborah was initially diagnosed, she came and she rang my bell and she shared with me. And I, I said, is there anything I can do? If you ever need me, I'm always here. She said, well, maybe sometimes let's come and have a glass of wine. We never got to, to have the wine. I remember one day I was in my backyard and make this brief and my chimes were ringing. I love wind chimes. And I had my flower baskets. That's when I was younger and healthier. And I had my flowers out. And Deborah called me and to the window and she said, your wind chimes. I was like, oh, my God, are they bothering you? And she said, no, they're not bothering me. She said, I love the sound. She had just got her back study built. She said, I love the sound of the wind chimes. And I love looking at your flowers. So I just want the family to know in her honor, I will buy a new wind chime this summer, and I will, if I don't plant in the dirt, I will <laughs> bring two beautiful baskets to hang in her honor. And Kelly, if you need anything for your father, make sure he gives you my son's phone number, and my son will always be there for your dad, because he is just the greatest human being also on this earth. Thank you. Lee. Kelly, Kristen, Jennifer, the McCord family. We just like to offer our deepest condolences and prayers. My name is Kimberly Thomas Winston. Debbie was my first cousin. She was actually a bonus big sister to me and my seven siblings. Debbie was such a proponent of education. 
to a point where we were little girls. She'd come by from the time I can remember of six, seven. What are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to do when you grow up? She'd go, right now I want to play with this pet worm, Debbie. <laughs> She was, uh, before there was, uh, they uh, take your daughter uh, to, to work day, uh, was, is now the new fad. She was doing that for us when we were 10, 11. We had to come to work with our cousin Debbie. She wanted us to see what she did, and she wanted us to plan for our futures as well. So I'd just like to tell you to please uh, accept our love and deepest condolences. Um, my mom, Debbie's aunt, was not able to be here today, but she wants to got, you guys to know that she's so thinking of you. You guys are on her heart. Thank you so much from the Thomas family. Thank you. Amen. I know that there was and is a lot still to share about this wonderful, talented, beautiful woman, Deborah McCord. But we thank you all for limiting some of your comments and remarks. And at this time, I invite Ms. Leisha Knight to come back and share the acknowledgments. Words of acknowledgement. The family of Deborah McCord would like to express their gratitude for the love, generosity, and kindness shared by dear friends during their time of sorrow. Perhaps you sent a card, called, or prayed for them. The McCord family is thankful to God for the blessings of the special people in their lives. Each and every one of you have a special place in their hearts. Lastly, the McCords have a gift from you. The family has provided cupcakes and water for everyone. Please feel free to take a goodie bag as you exit the church at the end of the service. Thank you. And at this time, there will be a silent reading of the obituary, and followed by another musical tribute from Mrs. Eunice Jackson and Angelo Hart, followed by the eulogy.
I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And so many lonely nights But when I look around And I think things over I find my good days Out of way my bad days I won't complain Sometimes my clouds hang low I just can't see the road I ask, I ask the question, Lord Why, why so much pain But he knows what's for me yes, he does. Yes, he does. Though my weary eyes Can't see So I just say Thank you, Lord Thank you. I won't complain Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain.
Amen. No need to complain. This morning, each of us is gathered in this place for the purpose of remembering, celebrating the life of Miss Deborah Diane Cord. But I, I'm not good at sugarcoating things. Uh, I kind of had a flashback during the service, sitting right where her kids are sitting, with my own mother. And no matter how many good words were said, no matter how nice the songs were, no matter how the ambiance was, I boo-hooed, <laughs> right? Uh, I had a little flashback, and it struck me uh, that uh, there are certain things you can rejoice about, and indeed, the death of a loved one is something you can rejoice about, but there's nothing wrong with having a little grief, too, That's right. right? I mean, if there's no grief, then something's wrong, in my opinion. If y'all don't feel a little pain at the passing of your mother, something ain't right. I'm experiencing a little something over her passing several days ago. Why shouldn't we grieve? After all, the church has lost a committed believer. This community has lost an outstanding citizen. And this family, you have lost a loving member. Feelings of sadness are only natural. On the other hand, we should also feel a sense of joy. We should have joy in recalling her contributions to this church, to her community, and to her family. And the reality is that as well as we know her, she wasn't a household name around the city and nation and world. Hmm? What Deborah did in her life is, however, as valuable as the contributions of anyone whose names are better known worldwide. So we have something to rejoice about, and we need to rejoice about it with the same pomp and circumstance as we would if she were an international celebrity. Well, Mrs. McCord wasn't and didn't seek to be world famous behind the scenes. She was a superstar. I mean, let, let's just take this church, for example. You've heard some of the stories. Now, as, as a leader and the pastor of a congregation, next to Jesus, I'm the face of the franchise. <laughs> for the good and bad, y'all stuck with me up here. I therefore receive a lot of the blame and a little bit of the credit for whatever happens here because God ultimately gets all the glory, right? Yet I know this enterprise called the St. Mark United Methodist Church would be absolutely nothing without the members who do the ministry. Mrs. McCord was one of those members. You've heard her biography, and uh, you know that she was very involved in the life of this church, but she, she didn't seek notoriety. She was, when you think about it, so she worked closely with the dancers and other ministries. She was really kind of a behind-the-scenes person. She was, I call her, a behind-the-scenes star. Oh, oh, what about the community? Deborah Diane was about busying herself in service to others, including working to create a better experience for African-American students attending SIU. Are there any, what do y'all call, Salukis? <laughs> Salukites? Somebody help me. What the heck is a Saluki? I mean, I just helped me. It's a dog. Y'all are dogs. That, it, I'm not, oh, that's... No, that didn't come out right. Y'all are... Your mascot was a dog, right? Right? And while she was on your campus, Lord help him. While she was on your campus, she worked to make things better for all African-American students. Are there any deltas? From SIU, raise your hand. All right. She helped make that happen, right? Deborah helped make it happen, but she did it from behind the scene. She was a behind the scenes star. Later in her adult life, she dedicated herself to practicing one of what I would call the most admirable and necessary vocations there is. She was an educator. Even after her retirement, Ms. McCord continued in service by volunteering for a number of important organizations, often doing the grunt work that helped those organizations accomplish their objectives 
Well, Debbie's hard work was celebrated by those groups, by each institution or organization she was a part of. She wasn't in it for the fortune. She wasn't in it for the fame, but was comfortable just doing the work uh -huh. that needed to be done. In her community, she was a behind the scenes star. So what about family? Whether they seek it or not, we know mothers are usually the face of a family, right? Sorry about that, brother, but she was the face of your family. The reality is, however, mothers never really receive the acclaim for doing what mothers do. We give them some props on Mother's Day, right? But their names need to be up in lights on the big boards. Y'all, her children, you're who you are in great part because she put in the work. She exposed you to culture. She encouraged you in school. She protected you from danger and from brothers, from what I hear. We'll leave that alone. She modeled a faith. Deborah didn't receive a plaque from the city for that. She didn't get her name up in the light for being a loving, dedicated mother, stepmother, or grandmother. She didn't even seek a claim or notoriety. You are the reward your mother earned by investing in you. Your accomplishments, your happiness, your faith are evidence of the investment she made in each of you that she did not become famous for when it came to even her family. Deborah was behind the scene kind of star. Brother McCord, you know better than anyone the kind of person Deborah was. The beauty you saw in her at your first meeting following that day at work. And we won't go into what attracted you to her. We'll just leave that alone, too. That was just the beginning. Even after you passed her litmus test of having a car of your own, <laughs> that was really just the beginning. But once the two of you grew past the initial stages of court courting, you couldn't help but fall in love for the humility and love at the core of Deborah's very being. You couldn't help but love someone as beautiful as she was on the outside and on the inside. How could you not love someone as giving and selfless as was she? How could you not love a woman who actually took pride in helping your light shine? Could it be, could it be your first encounter was not by chance? Could it instead have been the hand of God helping supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? Could it have also been God supplying her with a man he knew would love her in sickness and in health till parted by death? Mrs. McCord was indeed blessed to have you and her family by her side throughout all her long illness. We know, brother, you were a star behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. I've done 300 something funerals here, and that ain't never happened. That's right. That's right. That's, that's that's right. Unfortunately, you are now parted by death. And as difficult as it is for St. Mark to say goodbye, as difficult as it is for her community of acquaintances to say goodbye, I know it's even harder, more challenging for you, her family, to say Goodbye. But let me leave you with a short passage from Scripture that might add just a little joy inside your tears. Come from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 42. It says there was a, it's a story of a woman named Tabitha. She didn't hold office in her town of Joppa. 
She wasn't a religious official. She wasn't a crypto millionaire. Tabitha was simply known for being kind and generous to poor members of her town. She, she was known for working, fully help me, behind the scenes. <laughs> Tabitha died. Those who had been recipients of her generosity, they grieved with heavy, heavy hearts. But as a means of showing just how much the Lord loves even behind the scene stars, God brought the apostle Peter to her. And let me just read this piece of text and I'll get out of your way. The Bible says that when Peter arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas, Tabitha, had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and he prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Text says she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she set up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Tabitha's selfless service earned her a reprieve from death. Indeed, each of you know that God still works with behind the scene believers, and God is still in the raising business, but not the kind that raises folks from the grave just so they can walk a little longer in this corrupt old world, only to die again. But he gives the kind of resurrection power that raises believers from death so that they can walk around heaven for eternity all day long. Though this church is grieving, though her community is grieving, though you family are grieving, though I'm grieving, we should also be rejoicing because the faith that she had in Jesus that inspired her to be a behind the scenes star is the same faith that will raise her to be a star in the new Jerusalem where God will wipe every tear from her eyes and death will be no more, no mourning or crying or pain or disease. Deborah Denise McCord has received her reward for a job well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things God will make you over many things into now into the joy of your Lord. Let's give God praise not only for her but for her family who's done such a good job caring for her. Now the challenge is care for yourselves. We need to care for them. Amen. Amen. We invite the funeral director to come forward now and give us directions about what happens next. Let us bow our heads for our benediction. 
Now may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the good shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.